Merge Toilets is probably one of the most innovative brain rot games that you've never heard of to exist on the Roblox platform. The goal, well just like any other tycoon simulator, is to produce as many products and sell them for money in order to make more products and kind of repeat the process from that. Except this one is by merging toilets in order to make deadlier sh throw it in the dumpster and, and make money from that some- is this the right script? But you know, after playing the game for so long to the point that I question my own life decisions, I can confidently say that there is one thing missing in order for this game to become as good as some of the well-known tycoon simulators out there already. So in order to satisfy this need, I decided to program just that thing. And what is that thing you may ask? A sh machine gun. Y yeah, I made a gun that essentially shoots poop. Now, there may be a lot of kitty scripters out there who are just like, Oh, oh, it's a gun. It's so hard to make. I don't want to deal with vector three values and C frames and look vectors. And I'm here to tell you, that was me back in the day. Making a gun actually isn't that bad. Now, to make things easier for us, I just kind of made the weapon a tool just for ease of access. So I had to go in and weld all the parts together and then had to use my trusty tool plugin over here to kind of adjust the grip and uh, make it fit well. Now you may be thinking, I got you, Captain Fry. Just go to a server script, type in script, that parent that activated, use that event, mm, and then when you click on the, your mouse, it will start triggering that event and do what you want. Wrong, false, no. We're not using that stupid, dumb, activated event. You think I'm going to be using tool events in this script? Pathetic. No, in fact, I'm going to use what the big boy programmers use. It's called the mouse. And when I say the mouse, I literally mean we're grabbing the player's mouse. Now, you may be wondering, but, but Captain Fry, you're, you're using a local script to do that. You, you see, we use activated for a server. Shut the f*** up. You know, I'm going to do things my way, and you're going to sit through and understand why my way is the superior way. But anyways, we have our mouse. We've grabbed the mouse, and uh, one thing I want to check for is if the mouse is down. So I'm going to just, just create a simple Boolean value for that. And with the mouse that we've grabbed, it's got some neat events. But Button one up, button one down, button two down, and button two up. I think you can see where I'm going with this. And um, if you don't understand it, well, then I've lost hope for you as a program. So how exactly are we going to shoot bullets? Well, I'm actually going to use a while loop and I'm going to set this for, I don't know, 0.0 eight seconds maybe that's probably fine basically every 0 0.08 seconds we're going to yes thank you ai i think i can do things myself and uh, actually in fact i'm going to put the remote event inside the tool you stupid piece of shit. we're creating a remote in event in here i'm just going to call it fire you can call it whatever the hell you want it doesn't matter and uh we're basically checking if the mouse is down and if it's down we're going to fire a remote event to the server and send the mouse hit position let's get an idea of what the heck this means basically your mouse is on a specific thing hit is that like instance or thing or whatever and it grabs the position of that this is going to be an end position that we want our bullet to aim towards there we go interaction beautiful that script's done and uh, we're going to make the server script now so this server script is actually going to be the the main the main script basically we're going to grab our remote event that just fired now you may be wondering oh how, how do you calculate positions this is where i'm confused let me explain physics to you in roblox basically roblox has a thing called a c frame and before i even get to that let's actually grab our tip which is i just added like a little invisible part here and this is going to be where the where the bullet starts so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a variable called direction and this is where some of the magic happens all right so basically we're going to take our end position and we're going to subtract it by the tips position and now we're going to do a cool thing here and it's called unit. If you don't know what unit is, basically it's going to help us grab a direction of like the distance between these two vectors. Then we're going to make our beautiful C frame. Please know how to use C frames. For the longest time, I've tried to learn just doing stuff with vector threes and my goodness, have I struggled so much and dealt with so much pain because I didn't want to bother learning C frame. But anyways, we're creating a C frame based off the uh, direction we've got here. And then we're going to grab the look vector on that. It's another it's another vector three value that resides within the C frame and it basically tells you where the C frame is facing. This is extremely helpful because now we can do ray casting. A ray cast, we're going to start by our tip position and then we're going to grab our direction look vector and the direction look vector is going to have one thing multiplied by it and that's however many studs you want it to travel across let's say 30 i don't know we don't need to travel that long it's a machine gun it's got short range i mean you could 
dude, 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 could be crazy. You could make that machine gun like unstoppable. But this, this is basically a raycast. Roblox kind of shoots out like an invisible part based off like a direction vector we give it and a starting position. And if that thing hits another object, it creates this like raycast object. It, it basically has like a, a few attributes that you can use. But basically, we're gonna check if there is a cast and. AI. Can I please explain this without you being annoying as Anyways, we're gonna grab the instance from the cast, aka the thing we hit, like uh, your grandma. We're going to then see if it has a humanoid to make sure it was your grandma. Once we verify that that thing has a humanoid, obviously a character, so we'll, we'll just make it take damage. And uh, I also lied, uh, we still got more to do here because uh, this here, we don't have our stinky winky added to this thing yet. Right now, we're just like shooting an invisible part, and if it hits something, it damages it. If it it's a player. We need to add the poop. So that's what this local script's going to be for. Remember when I said that my method is going to be far superior to the stupid dumb brain thing that you were going to do? Yeah, if you're loading things on the server, like parts and stuff, stop. You're stressing the server out. I mean, think of it this way. Would you want to be handed a 10 to 12 page research paper slapped in the face multiple times and said, hey, you have to do this within the next few weeks. Moral of the story, load everything on your client so that way your whole server doesn't crash in case you load like a bunch of stuff we're gonna make a, a function here and uh, i'm gonna call that function uh, over here and that function is gonna be called uh we're gonna call it visualize i'm just gonna plop a bunch of stuff in here okay i plopped a bunch of this code here this is just again essentially making the poop and setting its c-frame to the proper c-frame so it's in the right position now we're going to have to figure out a way for this poop model to just glide its way like as if it's a bullet so how are we going to do that we're going to use a very amazing service that i like to call run service and if you don't know what run service is it is an amazing service to help with rendering stuff. Basically, we're gonna use an event called render stepped. And in that event, there is a, a, a parameter we get called delta time. And delta time is basically the time between each render. You'll see why this is somewhat important for us in a bit. Basically, what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna take our poop C frame, we're gonna multiply it by another C frame. And this C frame is actually going to have uh, a thing in here that I forgot to send in. We need to send in a constant value, a constant number, an integer. We're gonna make it three. This is our velocity. This is basically the speed at which the poop is going to travel. But then we're just going to do a little bit of math here and uh, this is basically going to change the poop C-frame every time and make it look smooth. Now, hold on a second. Just this alone is going to completely break our script and uh, cause issues. So we need to disconnect this once the poop has reached a certain distance. This is the distance that we specified over here in the raycast. If you take the position of the tip and you subtract it by the poop's position and then you grab the magnitude of that magnitude is the number or distance of the two positions which are subtracted and if that is greater than or equal to 30 then we're going to disconnect this loop then what we can do is make the poop unanchored so it's not you know gliding in the air and set can collide to true so it doesn't fall through the map and there's one more thing i want to do it's called the breeze service the breeze service is just hey make a new thread and destroy this item within this time limit see this would be a great adaptation the merch toilets but it would only be perfect if the gun farts so uh that's what i'm gonna do here and that one's perfect. I, I love that one. In fact, we need one for when it hits a player too. Oh, yeah, beautiful. We're, we're gonna add that one too. So there you go. There you have it. Uh a working script and to prove to you that my method is just far superior. I, I, I'll show you. I'll show you how this works. All right. Yeah, so I'm here. I got This is this is why you don't this is why you don't anchor tools. But uh we got here. We uh we grab our we grab our gun. Oh my god, look at that. Look at look at how beautiful that is. And uh we shoot. Oh it's magnificent. Oh I could kill myself too. It was way too slow. And I need this to be faster. I need this to, I need it to be as fast as I can. It's gotta be. It's gotta be incredibly fast. All right. Let's 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 see how fast this goes. That's the sound of coming out of Taco Bell and realizing, hey, maybe I shouldn't have ate five tacos in one sitting. Wait. I need to. Add, I need to add more dummies in here. I need to add more dummies in here. There needs to be so many dummies for. <laughs> I don't 
think there's anything better than this. Anyways, yeah, I know this was kind of a quick video, but you know, I had to enlighten the devs of Merge Toilets and, and just give them the brilliant idea of just adding something like this. Cause you know, I think it'd make the game so much more fun. And I know and none of you care about my opinion on this situation. And I don't understand why there are still people who are watching this video as of now, but hey, you know what? Since you made it this far, leave a like on the video, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I, I think I might need to uh, sit down for like a month and reflect on my actions.